Hey everyone! Well, it's February, and you know what that means! It's the season of love and romance. And what better way to celebrate than by reading a heart-pounding shoujo? Honestly, I'm just using this as an excuse to gush about my favorite mangas, but I will grasp at any chance I can get. So today, I'm making a video on my top 5 current favorite shoujo mangas. I hope that in this list, there is at least one man that will get your head spinning and your heart racing from the overload of cuteness. Now, there are too many series to count, and by making this list, I am in no way saying that other shoujos are lacking, but I tried to make a list of stories that are more lesser known and may not necessarily be talked about as much as other popular titles, such as uh, Kimi ni Todoke, Maid Sama, and Ao Haru Ride. There will be one major exception, but I'll get into that later. The mangas that I'll talk about today are ones that I've already read or own, and I've actually already reread a few of them because they're just too stinking cute and I can't help but go back to them. So, without further ado, I hope you sit back, relax, and let's get into my list of my top 5 favorite shoujo mangas. First up is probably the most lighthearted series, and that would be Waiting for Spring by Anishin. This was my first shoujo series that I actually ever collected, and I found it really easygoing and relaxing to read. This story revolves around our main character, Mitsuki, a shy and timid girl who is struggling to make friends at school. However, one day she bumps into four fellow schoolmates known as the Four Heavenly Kings. <laughs> however cheesy that is, at the cafe she works at, and from then on, an unlikely friendship begins to bloom. This story does seem quite typical, with its shy girl meets popular boy and falls in love, but even so, I thoroughly enjoyed reading it, and it was wonderful watching Mitsuki grow out of her timid shell and become the person she'd like to be, little by little. You get to follow her as she makes new friends, gains more confidence, learns to believe in herself, and eventually find love. Our main love interest is Toa, a star basketball player, but despite him being the clear love interest, you could fall for any one of these boys. They're just all too gorgeous and lovable. I'm sure I have pictures on screen right now, but look how beautiful the artwork is. This mangaka really did an amazing job with this title, and it's never lacking in the visual department. This series has 13 novels with a bonus manga coming out soon. It's not too short, but it also doesn't feel like it drags. It's like the perfect length for a series. Overall, this is a wonderful, heartwarming title, and I think it's a great choice for beginners who want to slowly dip their feet into the pool of shoujo. The second manga that I want to recommend is actually a relatively recent title, and that is A Sign of Affection by Su Morishida. This manga is about a college student named Yuki who is actually hearing impaired, meaning she hasn't been able to hear since she was born. One day on the train home, a foreigner asks her for directions. Unfortunately, because he's speaking in English, she cannot read his lips, and that is where our love interest and fellow classmate Itsomi comes in. He spots Yuki struggling on the train, and with his knowledge of Japanese, English, and German, we love a multilingual god, he helps the foreigner, and this event is the catalyst of a very beautiful, charming love story. I personally have only read four chapters so far, but I'm already hooked. First of all, it's really nice to see a story set in college. Although I'll forever be a sucker for a high school romance, I'm already in my 20s, so it's nice to see characters closer to my age. And second, I haven't come across very many mangas that cover people with disabilities, so it was really nice to see more representation. The first physical copy has not been released yet. It comes out in February, but you guys can find the first few chapters online. I really wanted to recommend this one to you guys because I think it does set itself apart from the rest of my choices in its own little captivating way. So with that, choice number two is A Sign of Affection. All right, now the next manga is kind of a little bit of a curveball because this series isn't technically a shoujo. It's officially categorized as a jose, being targeted towards older teens and women. But I definitely think this title can still pass as a shoujo, so I'm going to include it in my list. It's also been noted as a sports slash slice of life manga, so it, honestly it's got so many genres going for it. And that series is none other than Chihaya Furu by Yuki Suetsugu. I originally watched the anime first before reading the manga, but when I first saw the series, it stopped after season 2. And I needed to know what would happen, so I immediately started reading the manga. 
This series follows Chihaya, who befriends a boy named Arata at school, and he introduces her to the game of Karuta. Chihaya instantly falls in love with the sport, and the story follows her as she grows up, starts a Karuta club at her high school with her best friend Taichi, while trying to become the next queen, aka the number one female Karuta player. This series has a little bit of everything, drama, slice of life, sports, and romance. The other thing about this series is that to this day, I still can't make my mind up about who I want Chihaya to end up with. The two main love interests are both so good that I can't decide. I'm always going back and forth between Taichi and Arata. I've honestly never read a manga that's made me so torn between two interests. It's kind of refreshing to be so indecisive rather than outright thinking, yeah, it's gonna be him, no doubt about it. This is a series that I think a lot of people will enjoy, even if you're not a fan of shoujo. Once again, the artwork is beautiful, and the cover of each manga is stunning. The only thing that makes me really upset is that they haven't released any physical English copies of the series, except for a couple in a bilingual format, but they're quite expensive and they're a little hard to come by. You can buy them all digitally, but I wish they had physical copies of these because they would look so beautiful in real life. Kodansha, I'm calling you out right now. Please listen to me and release physical copies. I'm begging you. <laughs> also, I'd like to take a moment to let you guys know that season three of Chihaya Furu came out last year, six years after season two. So if you haven't watched this anime, please do because I feel like it's not appreciated enough. And if we give it more love, maybe they'll continue the series. That's my hope at least. Thank you for listening. Okay, so next up is going to be the one massively popular series that I will talk about, and this is because I can't leave it out of the list, and that is Fruits Basket by Natsuki Takaya. This series, this series, man, I will never get over it. I'm sure many of you will know what this series is about. But if you don't, it's about a high school student named Honda Toru who recently lost her mother in a car accident. She ends up living with her grandfather and other relatives, but due to house renovations, Toru tells her grandfather that she'll be staying with friends, not wanting to inconvenience her family. However, Toru also does not want to inconvenience her friends either and instead decides to set up a tent in what is not known to her, the Soma family land. Yuki and Shigure Soma discover her living in what is essentially their backyard, and after a landslide destroys her tent, they offer her a place to stay at their home. During this time, she also encounters the love of my life, Kyo Soma, and as he's about to start fighting Yuki, Toru grabs hold of him to stop their fighting, but he ends up turning into a cat. Toru discovers that they are all members of the Chinese Zodiac, and that they will turn into an animal if they're hugged by the other gender. <coughs> oh my goodness, excuse me. Toru discovers that they are all members of the Chinese Zodiac and that they will turn into an animal if they are hugged by the other gender. From then on out, Toru's life is filled with non-stop adventures as she begins her life living with the Soma family. I've mentioned this before, but this series is a classic that I truly believe will never get old. The art style is lovely, and the story is so intricate with so many ups and downs. Yes, this title is mainly a romance, but in the later volumes, it definitely has darker tones and a lot of angst as it deals with death and abuse. Also, a side note, but why do I love all the men in this series? Like, look at Kazuma, Shigure, and Hattori. That's like the holy trinity of men. What the f man? <laughs> I'm not saying I have daddy issues, but like, do I? <laughs> I'm starting to question myself here. Maybe it's because I read this series as an adult, so they're more appealing to me. Yeah, yeah, that must be it, right? I think I'm just starting to make excuses for myself at this point. However, Kyo will always be my number one man. Anyway. <laughs> This is a manga that I really believe any and every shoujo fan should read. I would even go as far to say that I think this would appeal to people that don't necessarily like shoujo because it definitely has more to offer than just romance. There is no way that I couldn't put this on my list because it left such a strong impression on me. It's a series I will never forget and for me it will remain a classic for ages to come. All right, this last series that I would like to recommend is probably tied for my favorite shoujo, along with Fruits Basket, and that is Strobe Edge by Io Sakisaka. Sakisaka is probably more well known for her other hit series, Aoharu Ride. 
that was actually released a few years after Strobe Edge, but I personally think this series is just as good as Horror Ride, if not better in my eyes. This story follows Ninako, a high school girl who's never been in love. She ends up bumping into a popular schoolmate named Ren on the train one day, and she gradually begins to fall for him as they get to know each other. It's not long after that she realizes her feelings that she discovers Ren is actually already in a committed relationship. As this is Ninako's first love, she's conflicted in doing what is right versus what her heart wants, and what follows is a heartwarming coming-of-age tale of self-discovery and love. This story emotionally hit me like a truck, and I was so enthralled that I read it all in two days. And I normally only read at night time, so like, your girl wasn't going to bed until 4am. <laughs> And I know when I say that this story emotionally hit me, a lot of people will probably think, oh, it's a really sad story. And no, it's not at all. I think the reason why it hit me so hard was because I feel like it perfectly encapsulated the feeling of falling in love for the first time. All those emotions you feel while falling in love. Confusion, trepidation, nervousness, happiness, sometimes heartache. It's all beautifully displayed in this series. And Saki Saka did such a wonderful job portraying these emotions. It's really hard to describe it, but you know that feeling when your chest feels tight or it feels like it's beating so fast it's going to explode? It literally feels like your chest is being pulled out. Pulling on your heartstrings! That's the saying! That's what we're going for! <laughs> anyway, I remember I felt the exact same way when I had my first crush, and I kid you not, reading this manga literally made me feel the same way all over again. There were times where I was clutching my chest because I couldn't handle how cute this series was and how Saki Saka was able to perfectly display this. If you can literally pull on my heartstrings and make me feel the same emotions that the main character is going through, you've done an A plus job and I think she absolutely nailed it. And it's not even the main characters you feel for, but all the side characters like Takumi, Daiki, and Mayuka. Almost everyone has a backstory and you really get to know each and every character personally. I know not everyone will think as highly of this series as Iyo Sakisaka's other titles, but this is definitely one that should not be passed up. That being said, if you are interested in reading this and you prefer to collect physical copies, then you best be getting your little booty moving because this is starting to go out of print and it's currently almost near impossible to find volume 6. That is the only volume that I'm missing in my collection and at this point, I'm very well nearly willing to sell a kidney to get it. And with that, it wraps up my list of my favorite current shoujo mangas. I hope this video introduced you to at least one series that you've never heard of before. And if you guys have any good shoujos that you think I would like, please leave them in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you all gave it a like, and if you'd like to see more, then please subscribe. I do have a Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram if anyone would like to find me on social media. I would also like to take a moment to thank anyone that has subscribed so far, and recently one of my videos passed 100 views, which it may seem like a really small milestone in the world of YouTube, but for me it was really exciting, and I'm just so happy to see your comments and your videos. They really make my day. So thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, just so you know, I currently am playing two Otome games. So I am considering doing a review video for them. If you guys would like to see it, let me know. Um, I still might do it anyway, because I had lots of fun filming the last one for PO4A. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful week. You're staying safe and I will talk to you very soon. Bye!